Hello everyone and welcome. If you watched the Tesla Cybertruck reveal, then you likely saw the viral video of a Ford F-150 being pulled by the Cybertruck in a battle of tug of war. And the purpose of this video is to explain to you why that demonstration was completely pointless. It seems no electric truck can be launched today without some gimmicky marketing stunt to go along with it. First we had the Ford F-150 pulling a million pounds, and now we have the Tesla Cybertruck pulling a Ford F-150. Now, a lot of people saw this video and they jumped to the conclusion that, well, of course the Tesla Cybertruck won. It's electric, electric motors have great low-end torque, internal combustion engines typically do not. So what we saw happen was a result of the Tesla having so much low-end torque versus the Ford F-150. And this is not true. This is not why we saw that happen. Uh, and so to explain this, you need to understand that the torque that a vehicle is actually putting to the ground starts at that engine and then it works its way through some gears and those gears multiply the torque before it ultimately reaches the ground. This happens with electric cars as well. You start with that electric motor, it passes through some gears, and then eventually it reaches the ground. And these gears are what give you your wheel torque, which is ultimately the force that's going to be accelerating you forward. So let's compare the Tesla Cybertruck versus a Ford F-150 and look at the gearing advantages here. So with an electric car, typically you're going to see a single reduction gearbox, one speed, and for Teslas, that gearbox is generally about a 9 to 10 to 1 gear ratio. They might use something slightly more aggressive for this because it's a truck, but regardless, we're going to go with an assumption of something close to what they typically do with a 10 to 1 reduction. So the motor sends torque to this gear reduction box, then it goes to the wheel. So what this means is that you multiply your motor torque by 10 times before it reaches those wheels. Now you will lose some torque because of the radius of your wheels. However, in this, we're just going to assume that we have the same size tires for both the Tesla and the F-150. And so we can assume that the torque advantage will be simply a result of the gearing. So if we look at the Ford F-150, uh, and we don't know exactly the spec of this truck, Tesla didn't release it, uh, but if we assume you know, it's got its engine, whether it's a six cylinder or V8 or whatever it may be, it's gonna send that torque then to a torque converter. Now torque converters can multiply the torque uh, somewhere around two to one. It could be a little bit less than that, it could be a little bit more than that, but it acts like a gearing difference where you do have torque multiplication. Then it goes to the transmission, and in the transmission of the Ford F-150 with the new 10-speed transmission, it's about a 4.69 to 1 gear ratio for first gear. Now this could be slightly lower if they were using the 6-speed, but not a huge difference either way. And then from that transmission, your torque now goes to the rear differential, where you have your final drive ratio. In this case, we're going to assume it's a 3.55. Ford does have more aggressive gear ratios than this, but we'll just assume it was a 355. So the multiplication of the torque coming from this Ford engine is 2 multiplied by 4.69 multiplied by 3.55. And so when you do the math, that works out to 33.3 times. So the engine torque coming out before it reaches those wheels is multiplied by 33. So there's plenty of torque here in this scenario for this Ford to accelerate in low gears. And this isn't even assuming it's in a low gear ratio if it was a four wheel drive vehicle. That would multiply this even further. So the whole point of this is to say that torque was not the reason here of what you saw happening. The F-150 is capable of putting plenty of torque down to the wheels because it multiplies that engine torque through the gearing in the drivetrain. Okay, so if torque wasn't the reason the Tesla won this tug of war, why did it win? And so we're gonna compare the forces that are going in each direction. So the Tesla, of course, wants to go this direction. We need to figure out what that force is. And then the truck, of course, wants to go this direction. So we need to figure out what that force is. And so the maximum force that either of these vehicles are capable of putting down is equal to the weight of the car, the normal force, multiplied by the frictional coefficient of the tires. For the purposes of this video, we'll just assume both of the tires are equal in this test. They both have the same amount of grip. So then all this demonstration comes down to is the normal force. Now we're first going to assume that this truck has four wheel drive and is operating in four wheel drive. I don't believe that's the case in this video, but first let's analyze it with that being the assumption. So an F-150 is typically gonna weigh about 4,600 pounds, depending on the options you can get them at about 5,000 pounds. So we're gonna give the Tesla the benefit of the doubt. Say this is a heavy F-150, which makes it more challenging for the Tesla and say it weighs 5,000 pounds. In reality, I bet this number was less. 
So the maximum force that this truck can accelerate with is equal to the amount of weight over driven wheels multiplied by the frictional coefficient. So in this case, the maximum force that the Ford can accelerate with is 5,000 pounds. Now, the Tesla, on the other hand, we don't know how much it weighs, but we do know that a Model X weighs 5,500 pounds, and we're going to assume that this is the dual motor out of the three options, single, dual, and tri, of the Tesla Cybertruck. By the way, it's really cool that for the first time, I can actually accurately draw one of the cars that I'm talking about in a video on a whiteboard. So regardless, we're assuming the Model X, or the Model X is about 5,500 pounds. I would say best case scenario, this truck is gonna be 6,000 pounds. I would, I would really assume it would be significantly heavier. I would guess 6,500 to 7,000 pounds is what the actual weight of the dual motor and tri-motor especially are going to be. Uh, but we're gonna give this, you know, make it a little bit harder for Tesla here and just say it only weighs 6,000 pounds. So then in this case, the maximum force that the Tesla is capable of accelerating with is 6,000 times one. And so that's a 6,000 pound force that the Tesla is able to accelerate with, a thousand greater than the F-150. So all we learned is that the Tesla is heavier than the F-150. Nothing really amazing here as far as the vehicle itself. It's simply able to accelerate because it weighs more, because it can put down a larger force. Now, if you watch that demonstration though, it looks like the Ford F-150 is actually rear wheel drive only. And the reason I say this is because you see only those rear tires spinning as the Tesla is pulling along. You see the front tires spin backwards, which if they were attached to a drivetrain would not work. And then you also don't see any 4x4 label on the side of the truck. So that all leads me to assume that this is in fact a rear wheel drive Ford F-150. And in this case, it makes this demonstration even more pointless because now we only have based on the F-150's weight distribution, 60% on the front, 40% on the back. Because we only have 40% of the weight on the back and we can only accelerate with the weight on driven wheels, we take 40% of 5,000, that's 2,000, multiply that by one, and our maximum force that the truck is capable of accelerating with is 2,000 pounds force. And so, you know, this is a third of what the Tesla's capable, assuming it weighs 6,000 pounds. So it's just a silly demonstration to do because obviously the Tesla's going to win this. It has three times the weight in this case on top of driven wheels. So we're not learning anything here. But Jason, bro, the Tesla pulled the F-150 uphill. Okay, let's assume Tesla wasn't working the angles there because that's kind of what I saw happen. And let's assume they weren't trying to be deceitful and they actually did pull a truck uphill. Great, it's a simple thing to analyze just like this. We just put it on a little bit of an incline. And so in this case, we're gonna use a five degree angle. This is steeper, 8.75% grade. This is steeper than the industry standard towing test on the Davis Dam Hill grade. And so this is a pretty steep incline. I'm confident that it's steeper than what we saw happen in the video. So that's what we're gonna analyze. And for the F-150, we're going to assume no load transfer. This makes the math a little bit easier, but also gives a slight advantage to the F-150 in this scenario. And then we're also going to ignore rolling resistance because it doesn't change the math all that much. So once again, we need to calculate our forces. What's the truck pulling this way? What's the Tesla pulling this way? And then we also are going to have gravity pulling everything back. And so for the F-150, that force is 2,000 pounds. That's the amount of weight we have resting on those rear tires, the driven tires. And then we're multiplying that by a cosine of five to get our component in this direction. Uh, and so that is going to give us 1,992 pound force that the truck is going to be pulling this direction. For our Tesla Cybertruck, which is going up this hill, we are looking at 6,000 pounds, the weight of the vehicle, multiplied by cosine five, and that is going to give us 5,977 pound force in this direction. And so then we also have to account for gravity. So all of this is trying to pull the Tesla truck down that hill. So we've got 11,000 pounds combined, 5,000 here, 6,000 here. We're multiplying that by sine of five. That's gonna give us our gravity component in this direction, not in the vertical direction. And so that will give us a force of 959 pounds. And so that, is going to be included with this here. And so what we're going to do is take 5977. We're going to subtract what the truck is pulling against it. And then we're going to subtract what gravity is pulling against it. And so that is going to give the Tesla an advantage of 3,026 pounds. 
So what this number proves is that it was very easy for the Tesla to pull the truck uphill simply because it has more weight on the driven wheels. So the only thing we learn from this video is that the Tesla truck is heavy. That is all that we learn. Tesla's truck is heavy. That's it. And so this isn't even necessarily a great thing to learn, right? Because cars shouldn't be that heavy. Uh, the more weight they have, the more energy it takes to move them around. And you know, the handling suffers, all kinds of things like that. And so while I do think that this this is a very cool truck and it's impressive and I do like Tesla. I own one. I have a Model 3 Performance. I think it's a fantastic daily driver. I think they really missed the mark here on this truck because the styling is just so polarizing that I really have a hard time believing they're going to get traditional truck buyers to convert over to electric. So if Tesla's stated mission is we're going to, you know, Im improve the speed at which sustainable transportation occurs and, you know, improve that transition over, uh, then creating this super polarizing, super weird looking truck uh, that doesn't even have access to the side of the bed uh, if you want, you know, grab something out of it and actually do some work with your truck. I think they're really missing the mark here of what their stated goal is. Now, if their stated goal is to just kind of make some cool truck that the Tesla fans out there are going to obsess over and talk about uh, that's polarizing and builds hype on the internet, they have nailed it. That's exactly what they're doing. But if they're genuinely trying to transition people over from internal combustion engines to an electric truck at a good price, which if their pricing holds what they claim it will be, which is not guaranteed, uh, then they actually have come in at a really good price on this truck really good range, really good performance. And then they kind of butcher it all with the styling because it's so polarizing and it's not even that necessarily useful from, you know, a, a worker's point of view of having a truck bed because it's only accessible from the rear and it's at this weird slant. And so I, I'm a bit disappointed by the truck itself because I don't think it's in line with what Tesla's stated mission is. I think it's cool. I just don't think it's doing what Tesla says they are attempting to do. So I appreciate you all for watching. If you want to see some similar videos to this, I've got one on a Tesla being towed by a Ford Raptor. I also have one on Ford's F-150 stunt and why them pulling a million pounds uh, on a train uh, was pretty pointless as well. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.